What is going on ladies and gentlemen, we are back again with another 90 day fiance video and this one is of in particular a season freaking nine. Can you imagine nine seasons of 90 day fiance including all of the freaking spin-off series as well? It's actually been mad, but nonetheless though, season nine, episode one, let's not waste any more time. Let's give a big massive shout out to every single person that is a member of the freaking channel. And without no further ado, let's get into this one. Let's... <laughs> I am what you would call hood bougie. Bougie is high maintenance. You're kind of going just a little bit beyond the norm, you know? Instead of drinking the normal bottle water, you may drink some sparkling water. I do appreciate nice things, nice suits, love watches. However, at the end of the day, you know, I didn't grow up in the suburbs, I grew up in the hood. That really makes me who I am. I'm the type of person that's listening to Tupac by driving a Whole Foods. <laughs> I'm laid back, I'm energetic, but obviously I do have my quirks like anybody. I'm pretty mildly, conservatively, minimally OCD. <laughs> I'm putting this back in because it doesn't belong out like that. <laughs> it belongs straight. Being detail-oriented has for sure helped me achieve some of the successes that I've had. You know, where I'm at right now in life, you know, I'm very grateful because coming from, you know, we're a lot of inner city kids, specifically black kids, some of us don't make it up, you know, and I'm extremely fortunate that I've been able to achieve the American dream. All right, listen, I'm gonna say it first, I'm gonna say it first. Why do I feel like I'm watching an episode of Love and Hip Hop? I mean, listen, for me, myself in particular, I am sick and tired of people, well, to be fair, let me be more abundantly clear, but for my own people, black people, whenever they get on TV, they've always got to give this, sorry guys, noise in the background but anyway they've always got to give this somewhat sub story of why they are the way they are i started with nothing i was one of those kids you know who basically wasn't really meant to make it but i made it anyway so now i'm just want to appreciate the riches in life listen okay cool but the problem is though that story is so freaking cliche it just bothers me now i'd rather someone just say listen <laughs> you see me i've been able to be successful and now i like to live the life so it is what it is I don't need to know about this or not because, you know, it, it, it then becomes about, you know, because I ain't black, that's why my life was hard. No, listen, I don't want to hear about that. I've heard that too many times in my life. It's just, it's just boring now. Like, let's move on. This is the problem with, I uh, could, you know what, low-key, I'm going to right now, but I'm going to say this anyway. But this is the low-key, one of the biggest problems within the black community. We feel like we always have to reference to the past in times when it's not even needed. This isn't needed, bro. Just get on with your bougie freaking self. A vain piece of me. Anyway, anyway, let's get into it. My apologies. <clears throat> I can show everything that I've done well in my life to my faith. I was born and raised Muslim uh, in a Muslim household. You know, we pray five times a day. And it's really the center of who I am. It's the root of what makes it out There you go. Perfect. Oh, All right, awesome. I am a real estate investor and I'm also a real estate agent. And you're also very annoying too. Because to be fair with you, I've never really seen a white person come on TV, TV minus Jesse, and be like, you know, actually, no, not even Jesse did that. You know, I came from nothing, so, you know, this is why I live the way. <laughs> I do apologize. It has got to me. I ain't going to lie to you, but it's just like, yeah, anyway, let's go. <laughs> this is the problem. Some people just have to, just have to give you a reason of why they're showing off. They have to give reason of why they're so confident, or maybe more or less, why they're so arrogant and to be honest if you're arrogant you're arrogant don't give me excuses why you're arrogant Pfft. and every single person that made it from the gutter grows up to be freaking arrogant when they make it hmm. but anyway let's proceed i'm gonna stop now let's move forward <laughs> want a client but it's not just any client this particular person i definitely know their needs their wants and exactly like what they're looking for hey, someone like a soldier so, so, so yeah, the I neighborhood looks like good. Your bathroom, full bath, right over that area. <laughs> Today's client is actually my ex-wife. This is where the, what they say, the magic happens. <laughs> this is you and your husband, right? Yeah. Beautiful bedroom, spacious. I love it. Right? I love it. Well, that's my ex-husband, and my real estate agent. I really only trust him. We're still maintaining a great relationship, and we're still friends. I think we're better friends now than Beautiful, we massive closet. And you know I need closet space. We know how you do. We were married for 10 years, and we have two amazing children. <laughs> Our daughter, Zena, who's 16, and our son, Yusuf, who is 13 years old. Now, you do know that this is like 45 minutes from your house, so you're going to... See, that's, yeah, that's the thing. It is, a, <laughs> it is a quite a bit of drive. So, we're going to have to be working on a schedule where we can meet halfway or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah. When we went through our divorce seven years ago, it was a very rough time. No matter how much you love someone... I'm going to say it right now. 
whoever he's whoever his woman is on the show, <laughs> there's gonna be a clash between her and uh, the baby mother. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, they're very good friends. And I'm not saying they're very good friends is in like they're still doing a thing together. I don't think they are. I don't believe they are. But you know how some people can be. They'll be like, oh, so you're good friends with your ex now. Oh, so you're good at co-parenting your ex now. Okay. So I've got a challenge in front of you. Oh, so there's competition. That's how some people be, you know. Some people just, do, some people do prefer it if somebody doesn't have a good, does not have a co a parent relationship with ex. Some people prefer just to walk in and just be like, listen, I'm your mother and you're going to listen to me. <laughs> Forget about anybody else. I'm just saying. And uh, based on TLC and the fact that there's always drama around TLC's TV shows, especially Night Day Fiance, I'm predicting that there's going to be a problematic situation with his woman. But hey, I hope I'm wrong. But let's get into it. Well, his ex-woman, my apologies. But let's get into it. Nothing can prevent a person from like waking up one morning and saying, you know, like, I'm not in love with you anymore. You know, I feel like I was a failure. You know, I feel my children. So when I met Shida, you know, it was a gift. You let me up inside and make me come alive. You know you hit me la, 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 la. She's 37 years old. She's a yoga instructor. I'm sitting here enjoying this beautiful weather. And she's running that into me. Love you. Now, Shida and I have some mutual friends on uh, social media. Out of the blue one day, she got into the DMs and she expressed that she was interested. You're always being incredible and beautiful in my eyes. I thought she was very beautiful, but her name, I was like, it is way too close to my ex-wife's name. Shida and Shahida. <laughs> Mother f See what I you <laughs> This guy likes to play with fire, Mr. OCD. Yeah, he definitely is OCD with the whole names and everything, isn't he? And no offense to anyone that obviously has OCD. I'm not trying to, you know. Mm. But nonetheless, though, <laughs> this is problematic already. But okay, let's get into it. <laughs> so similar that I actually avoided talking to Shia because of her name initially but finally you know I couldn't resist <laughs> one of the things that I absolutely love about Shia is just her drive she's an entrepreneur she started her yoga business she has a will to want more in life oh Machine, you were here with me and we were talking and things were vibing well and then I was like I have to see you I have to see you in person and that's when I made plans to, to visit her the one and only seeing her was really great she's very shy but she doesn't know you um, sometimes an uncomfortable shyness. Stop being shy. Stop being shy. <laughs> but the beauty of her is as she starts to be around you much more, then she starts to open up. I spent seven days in Trinidad, so we only spent actually seven days together physically uh, before we decided that, okay, this is official. I always kind of had like in the back of my mind an idea perhaps that, hey, if she's what I think she is, I want to bring a ring just in case. And just in case did come to pass. She said yes, and we applied. Are you Kansas City, Missouri? Spend the rest of my life with you. A couple of months after I visited Trinidad and Tobago, COVID-19 took over the world. So I have not physically seen Shida close to close to two years now. I have some pretty big news. So remember Shida? Yes. Um, it's been a long process waiting mm -hmm. for her the visa, but we finally got everything. And she's going to be coming in town this weekend. This weekend? I know a little bit about Shida, but I really don't know too much about the Lyle Stadium. Like, if she leaves the socks on the floor, there's going to be some issues. She's going to be out? She might have to sleep on the couch. <laughs> You know, I am the tickless a little bit. I am a little. That initial reaction. This weekend? Oh, okay. And you know the way she she's already planted a seed about socks. You know what I'm saying? She's she's sort of getting paranoid about you know about maybe uh, the new woman's behavior. <laughs> Listen, I could easily be overthinking this, but at the same time, though, like I said before, this is TLC. Never never think that what you're thinking is too over the top because. Trust me, each season there's always some madness that happens that we think that maybe isn't going to happen because really and truly on the first episode, we want to be very open and very, you know, optimistic. But to be honest with you, I don't really care to be optimistic because the reality is this is TLC. So uh, I'm going to expect the madness straight off the bat, <laughs> if you know what I mean. But anyway, let's get into it. Crazy. Yeah, crazy good though. Crazy is not always bad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised that it's taken Bilal seven years to find love again. Bilal's very picky and... I wish them luck. <laughs> Obviously, she'll be, you know, at the house uh, with the children. You know, I definitely want to make sure that, you know, we just want to be on the same. And I appreciate that. So do you feel comfortable enough to where you would marry this woman tomorrow? Yeah, you know, we actually, you know, had, you know, our Nikah spiritual union. You okay. know, there are a couple of things within our religion that we do not do. Like, we don't have sexual relationships before we get married. So Shida and I thought that it would be best to have a Nikah. It's like a marriage, it's a spiritual union. Now, we're not married under the laws of the United States, but under the eyes of God, we are married. So she can live at my home. We can be together. How do you guys meet? Really just through social media. Brother, I know you be on Facebook flexing and all that. Listen, I'm not going to lie to you, right? But let's just take religion out of the side, out of the way for a second, right? But let me tell you something real now, right now. When a green card is involved, 
you want to make sure everything is good. You know what I mean? So to be honest with you, he can, they can get married religion or, based on religion all they want. But a matter of fact is this though, when the, 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 the American marriage, or the green card marriage or whatever marriage you want to call it, I want to say normal marriage, but that's not the same thing because obviously religion, the more of the story is this, is that when they do get married so she can get the green card, <laughs> that's the marriage you really want to concern yourself about more than the one of your own religion because the fact is this, if she gets that green card and then she bounces, then you're going to realize that your religion marriage was just pointless you know what i mean so to be honest with you if i was in their shoes or if i was in his shoes i would focus some more on finding out if i want to marry her based on that green card first once i know that yeah she's legit and all that kind of stuff then i would then proceed to get, then get married obviously religion wise first so you know what i mean because i think the religion marriage would probably matter more than the American marriage? I want to say Amer just the green card marriage. It's so hard because I'm trying not to say things in a sort of way to offend people. But uh, you know what I mean, though? The fact is, I think that is the priority first, the green card type marriage first, or the K-1 visa type marriage first. You know what I mean? Prioritizing that, is this worth it? Is this woman really, really being genuine, okay? And then get your traditional marriage in after that, you know? Because at the end of the day, at least you then know that traditional marriage means even more than because you've got clarity. The fact is they've known each other for two years, well, they've known each other for a while, but they've been dating, I guess, or been in a relationship or whatever for two years, and that, and they haven't met each other within the two years. Meet her first, bro. Get to know her physically, not necessarily sexually, but in person. But hey, they wouldn't call it 90 day fiance for nothing, would it now? But anyway, let's proceed. Hmm. So does she, do you think, or do you know, or are you sure? Does she really love you for you? Because, you know, we know you got your money. We know you drive a little Mercedes. And what, be a little? what I'm saying is women can be blinded by the lights, the glitz, the glamour of what sure. she thinks you have. Even though you think that's not, I really don't. Like, I, like the funny thing is, like, I purposely, like, don't show what I have. Are like, you serious? Like, yeah, you know, she's never seen my house. She's she doesn't know what she's about now. to be living at? No, she doesn't seem like... You know, like, even like when we video chat, you're looking at a wall, like, I've never shown her some material things related to my success because I wanted to see if she was really in it for me, not just what I have. Unfortunately, there are some people who they consider gold diggers out there, and there's a lot of things that we still don't know about each other. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Well, there you go. There's still a lot of things you don't know about each other. But listen, just because you show her a freaking wall, it doesn't mean that she doesn't know what Google is. If you're into real estate and she does somehow know who you work for, what company you work for, or the area you work in, she's going to be able to Google you. And to be honest with you, she can Google obviously the type of houses that you be selling. She doesn't need to know how much you're earning because she can just guess straight off the bat. And to be honest with you, the fact that man likes to always dress to impress, whatever he probably wears throughout these videos, chats they haven't per se, he's probably wearing like nice little suits and X, Y, Z. And if he's on social media and she's on social media, which she is, of course, she's going to see whatever he's posting. So to be honest with you, the way he's thinking is very old school, bro. Speed up. A woman doesn't need, you don't need to show her yourself physically that you've got this, this and that. She can just see it on your socials because he's the kind of guy that would do that on his socials. Tell me otherwise. <laughs> Come on now. But anyway, but not, but, 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 but at the end of the day, you know, this is me being, the, but this is me being, um, I don't know, but, but obviously, you know, in, in all in all, we don't want, you know, um, to there to be a, a problem. We wanted to work out, you know what I mean? But anyway, right now though, the, the ex-wife is speaking a lot of facts and, uh, I can only really be on her side with this one at a time because, uh. It's TLC. <laughs> I don't feel like she's coming from a jealous place at all. She's just definitely coming from a very concerned place, which makes a lot of sense. And the matter of fact is, though, the ex-wife obviously has to also protect herself because they've got kids together. And if this woman is coming in and she is a gold digger and she runs him dry, that means that the, if he's run dry, it also affects her and the children. Do you know what I'm saying? So I definitely understand her wanting to be very cautious. Why wouldn't you be? But let's get into it. She's about to be living at? No, she doesn't seem like, you know, like, even like when we video chat, you're looking at a wall. Like, I've never shown her some material things related to my success because I wanted to see if she was really in it for me, not just what I have. Unfortunately, there are some people who they consider gold diggers out there, and there's a lot of things that we still don't know about each other. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Um, that's, 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 that's a good little game to play, but <laughs> yeah. you're crazy for that one. Is she going to sign a free now? Are you going to be protecting your assets? I think it's important to have in place. Yeah. There are certain things that I want to be able to protect before the kids. Yeah. So, you know, you nervous about a couple of months, and they say, you know, they got half of everything that you have, and they never have built what you have. I don't know if she's using him for money. I've never sat down and had a conversation with her, but I stand for my kids and just for their protection. And so in the end, I just hope that he puts his paperwork in to protect his assets as well as the kids too. You need to have this in place because you think you know somebody, but you really don't. Yeah. Yikes. Just let me know what you need and I'll be happy to help. Thanks. My name is Jessica.
name is Kara. I'm 29 years old and I live in Charlottesville, Virginia. I live, breathe, and dream about balloons. We have two types of frames. We can do a circular frame or we can do a, a big square 8x8. Eight eight. I make big balloon garlands. I like being able to help people celebrate fun times. Especially now because people can't gather as much. If they can make a, an event feel special with this elaborate, monstrous freaking balloon arch, I think it brings a lot of vibes, you know, to the party. It's a lot of creative fun, but they can also be really stressful. This is something that I came up with during COVID. I think everybody had like a thing that they got into because everybody had so much time in mind. I was balloons. But really, I'm the Jill of all trades. <laughs> I've been a chef, I've done barista I have been a dancer and been paid for that, singer, been paid for that. I've recorded audio for audiobook. Forgive me for forgive me for being so judgmental, but uh, she's suspect. <laughs> she's giving me suspect vibes, man. I don't know what kind of suspect, but there's something off key about this woman. Do you know what it is, right? Yeah, I've spent my life around too many freaking psychopaths. You know, I'm sad, and I feel like I can I can I can just notice one from the bat. And I'm not saying she's a psychopath, right? But she's gonna be interesting. I can just sense it. There's just something about her energy. But anyway, I just wanted to get that off my chest as I always do, of course. But yeah, <laughs> let's proceed. Let's go talk, talk. When I was 20, I started traveling all over the world. I lived in four countries. Now I speak three languages. I was partying, drinking, and meeting tons of people, you know, living my best life. And I definitely was not setting aside any time for relationships. You know, like I am the epitome of party girl on like the highest level. But then two years ago, I took a job that sent me down to the Dominican Republic. And then I was literally just sitting at a table working on my computer with a colleague and this waiter strolled up to our table and said, lady, he's tequila time. Yeah, Kara, he's cute, but he's super young. He thought he was like a young boy, which he probably, I mean, he was, but he's a beautiful young boy. I mean, he was 21, it's definitely legal. Yeah, a little cougar action over here. And then we exchanged numbers, started chatting, and one thing led to another. His name is Guillermo. He's 23 years old from Caracas, Venezuela, and he's been living in Dominican Republic for the past four years. I love you. Guillermo is beautiful, brown, chisel jaw, fat lips. I call them my pillows. Even his grandmother says how he has a sexy mouth. My granny says that you know it's gotta be true. <laughs> so I had the opportunity through my job to actually move down to the Dominican Republic and that changed everything. Within a few days of me landing, he was pretty much spending every night at my house. We even adopted our dog Chiqui Mama together. Guillermo has literally made me a different person in a better way. I've been in relationships, but like, I don't let them get that serious. And so I think before I was like a little bit rough and tough, not letting people in and Guillermo just nestled his little way right into my heart and made me soft. We had been living together for about eight months. He arranged for us to go to this really beautiful hike through the kind of through the jungle and ended up on this really huge rock. And he just like dropped down on one knee and I started crying. It was just so beautiful. I don't think I ever thought that the killer cut guy would be my fiance, you know? <laughs> We decided to go ahead and move forward with the K-1 visa so that we could start our lives in the United States. The job that I had going down fell through. And the U.S. has more like job opportunities and I wanted to start a real estate career and I feel like I can do that better here in the United States. All right, Chiki, you ready to call daddy? It's time. It's a time for the call. Hello? Hola, mi amor. Si, sí, you look so cute. <laughs> Chiki's excited to see you. Como esta, Chiki? Bien, papá. <laughs> She's good. When I left Dominican Republic, we had like a month maybe before his interview. And then COVID happened. And so what should have been a month has become a year. It's his visa and I'm so excited. I just want to scream, but I know that we still have a really big hurdle in front of us. Are you worried at all? Like going to the airport with your expired passport? I do. You are worried? Yeah. Guillermo currently holds an expired Venezuelan passport and Venezuela right now is having an incredibly difficult time politically. Are you already packed? Do you have everything ready? I'm almost ready. Luckily, the United States and Venezuela have an agreement that they are able to use that passport only for visa purposes. And you have your passport and your papers and everything? Are you sure? <laughs> it's part of the fact that she gives me very interesting vibes. I generally feel like this is a genuine relationship, to be honest with you. So far, I don't see any red flags from him side, from his side, you know? And nor do I see red flags from her side per se, but I've definitely got a good feeling about their relationship at this moment in time. But hey, Usually when I have a good feeling about their relationship being good, it's usually when it goes south. <laughs> because it's TLC, right? <laughs> anyway, I really hope that, you know, it goes well, to be honest with you, because, you know, she's a beautiful girl too, man. You know what I'm saying? Redhead. Love me a redhead, to be fair. Anyway, let's proceed. I have chose to go down and kind of escort Guillermo back from the Dominican Republic because they say it won't be an issue, but I feel like what airline's gonna let you check in with an expired passport and be like, yeah, sure, get on the plane even though your passport's expired. I have the papers from the embassy that they gave me. It's okay, I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there in like however many hours and then we'll like run through a list to make sure you have everything you need. Perfect. 
If I didn't push Guillermo, I don't think things would get done. I mean, I had to do all this K1 paperwork. And because he's so young, I think that Guillermo may not be taking this seriously enough. Everything is gonna be okay. Uh-huh. I asked for it. I believe it. Never see it. You know, like, 23 is... I don't know. He, you know, thinks he's ready to get married. But sometimes I'm, you know, a little concerned about how young he is. So how do you feel? Uh-oh, she's a bit concerned about his age. I mean, listen, you're concerned. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm of age. Um, what, What's her name again? I've forgot her name already. <laughs> but give me a call, all right? <laughs> Red head and all that. <laughs> anyway, I'm just kidding. Listen, here's the thing. Um, The fact that she's already got this paranoia about his age, to be honest with you, is the very good reason why she shouldn't even be thinking about getting married to him. Because the matter of fact is, for me personally, there's no point of getting married to someone if you've got doubts. You know what I mean? You get married once all the doubts have disappeared. As long as the doubts are there, you know what I mean? So for me personally, um, she needs to rethink her choices because it's not really going to end well, um, possibly, in the long run, if she's always going to be paranoid about his his age. Because it seems to me that whenever he behaves some, whenever he's going to behave in a certain type of way, she's just going to be like, oh, it's because of his age. Oh, oh, you know, oh, I wish you could, I wish you could just grow up. Oh, I wish you just could be be a bit more mature. And this is the problem when you're with someone and you're and and you feel like their age is shown by the way they behave, and you know you can't tolerate that. You gotta bounce, and that's what she's gotta do. You know what I mean? But uh, some people just love to stay in sticky situations, don't they? Nonetheless, let's get into it. Oh, but then again, some people like to be in these situations because they feel like they have they have the power. You see. And like he's young so i can control him there is also the aspect too to be fair so now i'm going back on my stuff and i'm going to say now i don't know if these two are really going to work out but i hope they do yeah but let's get into it what's been your problem for the past five years oh kind of weird it's kind of a very sentimental moment yesterday i was with my friends playing soccer and he was like i have to go i know my biggest fear is that he will not like his life here. You know, he's coming to a place where he doesn't know anyone. All he has is me. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be different, especially being pressurized under a 90-day time frame. It definitely gives me some concern. I gotta, I gotta go, actually. Too fast. Not too fast. I gotta go, babe. Honestly, if Guillermo and I didn't work out, I would be crushed. I just can't imagine finding another person that would make me want to get married. Jiggy wants to say bye as well. See you soon. All right, I love you. Love you. Bye. Miona's a small, sexy fireball. And most of the time, Miona and I have spent... Three. I'm 28 years old and I live in Rapid City, South Dakota. I'm out there, I'm out the box, got a lot of tattoos and crazy hair and dress like I'm from some other planet sometimes. Growing up, I was a jellyfish in a small pond. <laughs> I was colorful and wild, I didn't really fit in. My role since I was five years old has always been the jester, the clown, the wild card, the, the black duck. <laughs> I didn't embrace that role for a long time until I realized I bring a lot of color into people's lives. This is who I am, and I am goofy, and I am wild, and I got a lot of energy, which you don't know do that. I love to create, so whether it be fashion, art, clothes, but mainly music, that's my soul. All right, I'm gonna go stupid on this one, bro. Cause I've been stuck up in a rat race, chasing material. Life's like a merry go rat race, chasing material. Damn, where my money go? Remember when I said I feel like watching Love and Hip Hop? <laughs> you know, Love and Hip Hop is a show that was created for people that failed in their musical career, more or less. And uh, obviously, within the last couple of seasons, we've had our, our fair odd musicians here and there. I mean, the worst one has to be Usman, from my experiences. But, uh... <laughs> Ah, okay. Another one trying to propel his musical career. What happened to that guy? What's his name? His woman's name was Jasmine, but what was his name? Oh man, it, it wasn't too bad to be fair with you. But they're still married, aren't they? Which was just good for them. But anyway, let's proceed here. Yeah. Hmm. I've been making a lot of solo music lately, but also I'm the front man for a band named Black Serbs. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Black Serbs is a wild group of young, hungry artists. We create space punk music, which is punk rock mixed with electronic hip hop. Never been to Black Serbs if I hadn't met my high school best friend and bandmate David. He is a refugee from Serbia, and it really had a huge impact on me when David took me there for the first time. It was life changing. It was the first country that I traveled to out of the United States, and the food was amazing. The culture was amazing. The women are absolutely gorgeous. I've been to Serbia over ten times. About two and a half years ago, I was on tour with the band, and I had been single for three months. I was very adamant about not getting any relationships or hooking up with anybody. But that's when I met Miona. She's a makeup artist from Niche Serbia and right away. Miona's a small, sexy fireball. She's got a temper, she tells it how it is, and that's corny. But the first time I saw Miona in person, I had the butterflies in my stomach, and you know, I started feeling you know, a bunch of emotions. But um, she's my soulmate. 
Me on and I got engaged in Thailand. It was super romantic. I had a red suit on. She had like a yellow dress on. We kind of looked like ketchup and mustard, but we looked fly though. And I got down on one knee and she said yes. I left home at 17. I lived in various places all over the United States and I ended up in Los Angeles. But since COVID happened, my band is not actively performing. On top of that, Mion and I spent a lot of money on travel and then also with the K1 visa process. I'm home. So in order to save money, how are you? Good. Oh, you Thank you. I moved back in with my parents. So you've been gone for a while. Were you like getting ready? Yeah, I got to work out in and just keeping my stress levels low, you know? My mother, Mahala, is a strong biracial kick-ass therapist from Rapid City, South Dakota, and she does not play any games. We're so much alike and we butt heads, but she's my superhero. What are you cooking? Uh, um, bacon and egg and some toast. I love ice. My parents had me when they were both super young, and my biological father wasn't present in the early years of my life. Brian is my stepdad. He's been in my life since I was six years old. I think of him as my dad, and I refer to him as my dad. When is Miona getting in again? She comes in on Thursday. Miona's K-1 visa getting approved was the best thing that's happened to me since the pandemic started. And after not seeing her for months, Miona's coming very soon, and I really want her to feel welcome to coming to South Dakota and coming to my parents' house. What does she expect? I mean, is she like, when you, I mean, is she <laughs> Here. Yeah, I don't know what she expects. I think South Dakota is a good starting spot. Um, she's not too excited about it. You know, she wants to be in Los Angeles. And I told her like, South Dakota is underrated, and this is like a hidden gem. This is middle America. Like she's got to, she's got to see that. Growing up in Rapid City as a biracial young man had its challenges. Rapid City is a small town. Usually there was no black people. No. I can't do it. I can't do it. Explain to me how his mother is biracial. Can can somebody? <laughs> I don't even want to get into that topic. Okay, I don't want to get into it because that's why I was just like, <laughs> but I want to know how she. You know what? Okay, cool. Whatever. Let's just let's just keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Let's keep it. Uh, let's keep it moving. <laughs> ah, okay. I'm gonna have to Google what biracial is now because now I'm questioning myself. <laughs> but yeah, let's go. I really struggled with that. You know, I was too white to be black. I was too black to be white. After leaving Rapid City, I did not want to come back for a long time, but. Now that I'm older coming back, I realize that this is my home and this did turn me into who I am and who I'm growing. And I'm really hoping that by bringing my fiance here, she can really understand who I am and she can see the beauty that I now see, which I didn't see when I was younger. I'm nervous. I mean, I'm nervous about her pressuring you to move before you guys are ready. Her presence on social media looks like she would want to live in Beverly Hills. That's not what we have here. Right. And I'm not sure how long it's going to take for you guys to make that much money to be able to afford that kind of life. What if you can't? What if you're here for longer than a... Don't project that over. Don't project the Don't fear project on. it. We gotta speak it into existence. How much money do you have saved to, to support Miona when she comes here since she might be able to work? Why are you worried about the money situation? I'm a hustler. Is she a hustler? Not like me. I can sell so you're anything. So you're like avoiding the subject? No, I'm just saying I can sell salt to a slug. Okay, that's I can not sell meat jury. to a vegan eating vegetables. I can oh, sell jury. anything. You are you're totally you? avoiding the topic. But no, I'm okay. just saying. I'm serious. All it's gonna take is one song. Have faith. I am concerned about Jabri Miona's financial situation. I want Jabri to be happy and successful um, in his career and in his relationship. But I also want to make sure that he's choosing someone who is going to be a, a real partner, where they both are like lifting each other up and don't have as much drama as I'm a little bit worried there may be. Jabri, we're really excited right. that you are saying that you're happy and we're excited to see that, right. to see you actually in person. I mean, what, we've talked to her three times, four times on FaceTime. On FaceTime. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys are going to live here, so we're going to have some expectations. Okay. How do you think she's going to respond to when we sit down with her when she comes and we're laying out what needs to be done to be a part of the household? I think it'll be cool as long as I don't lay it out. Like, <sighs> Are you hearing us? Ah, uh, their relationship is a write-off. It's, it's a write-off straight off the bat. It is a freaking write-off. <laughs> Mr. Party Buddy, now I'm ready for a relationship. I'm curious, I'm curious, right here, what he's told her, though. I don't know if he's sold a lie to her about his about his about his life you know what i'm saying so for me personally i am quite interested because it doesn't really matter whether she's a gold digger or not what matters is what dreams he has sold her because you know some of these people who are musicians out here in this world they love to live the life or fake it till you make it so the question is has he been faking it to get her and for her to stay you know what i mean <laughs> I mean, if it goes south, to be honest with you, it's only going to be his fault, in my opinion. I wouldn't even put it on her for being a gold digger per se, because the fact is this. If you're going to attract a gold digger, make sure you're able to live up to the expectations. You know what I mean? But again, no, we don't know if she is a gold digger, but if she is, he's probably told her some X, Y, Z nonsense that doesn't fit the bill, clearly. Like, he hasn't even got savings at this moment in time. And he's talking about I had to move back to my parents' house so I could save... 
Oh, wait, okay, whatever. Okay, Mr. Party Animal. <laughs> His savings are with the parties. You know what I mean? That made no sense. What? He said, oh, no, N never mind. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, that sounds like that. You, you always, you, oh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you learn from experience, so go ahead. Oh, what are you trying to say now? Sometimes uh, we offer advice okay. based on what we know, okay. and you sometimes ignore advice. Like when? When you jumped off a bridge onto a train. I was wearing a good yo, but uh, I should have got a stunt, man. My foot still hurts from that. Trevor jumps in. He, he, he doesn't test out the water. He jumps in. I am nervous. This is a, really a stranger moving into our home. I think it would be pretty nerve-wracking, I think. Mm -hmm. I appreciate both you guys letting me stay in here and supporting me on this journey, because I know it's a lot. Thank you. It's going to be okay. I'm nervous. Too. I know. I just, I don't know. I do have doubts sometimes. Most of the time you and I have spent together has been vacation time. We've been in a honeymoon phase up until this point. So now that we're going to be together every single day, and this is not her country, so it's not like I can say ciao and go about my business. Not to mention, it's going to be interesting, Miona and I living with my mom and my dad. I hope that we will make this work, but it could be potentially a lot of conflict. I have great news. You guys know Shida, yep. right? She's coming. If my children was gonna catch more fish. <laughs> my ex-wife and I, we share joint custody with our children, Zayn and Yusuf. And going out on the lake is something my children and I love to do very often. You want to anger out? Zayn wants to tell the anger No, I don't. Well, somebody got to anger out. Get to it. Get, get, get to it. Where's that? Oh. <laughs> Things look weird. Family to me is extremely important. You know, outside of the faith, it's the number one thing that I value. My children, man, they're, they're everything to me. I hope it didn't get stuck on something. The kids knew that we've been trying to get Shida to come here. So now that we actually got her ticket, now is the time to really tell them that she's actually going to be here. I have some great news. You guys know Shida, yep. right? She's coming. Actually, she'll be here on Sunday. This Sunday? Yeah. Are you Sunday? serious? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> we finally get to meet her, like, personally, because we only, like, talked to her, her a couple times. Yeah. Having Shida, my kids, having a good relationship is vital. There's a huge risk to have her here because anytime I invite anyone into this circle, you know, my children, like, that's a huge thing. So there's a lot of pressure, a lot of unknowns. You know, it's going to take some adjustment. Shida. You can go yeah, tell yeah, Shida. Yeah, Shida. If you want to give her, like, a, you know, a pet name or something, you know, something kind of cool, fly, kind of, like, comes off your tongue really nice. Like butter. Like butter. It's up to you guys, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Okay. Obviously, she's not your mother, so she'll never be your mother. Your mother's your mother. I don't think she'll come in and mess up with the synergy that we have. Think positivity. Period. Here we go. Hey, Dan. How are you? Doing good. So, Lego. Like, I'm so hot. What's up? What are you up to? I'm just busy packing some stuff. Packing some stuff? I'm looking forward to that house. The house? Yeah. I'm still doing that bike wall. I keep What's wrong with the white wall? I mean, that means it's clean. Yeah, that's all I see. But it's tricky, right? All the hiding people stuck. It's not really high. It's just that, hey, you're on your way out here anyway. You might as well see the person. It's all good. <laughs> to be quite honest, everything feels so surreal. Like, I still can't believe that I will be there with you for two years. So much feelings going on right now. Yeah. Obviously, you know, there's, there's going to be some adjustments, you know, yeah. on all of our parts. I mean, you know, a huge adjustment for the children, you know, um, and also obviously a huge adjustment for yourself. You're stepping into, you know, a mother role immediately. Can I just tell you one thing? What's that? A little scared when it comes to that, to be quite honest. Which part? Like, um, going as mom. You know, for someone who's never been a mom. I think if you go into it, just yeah. be yourself, you know, and be the loving person that you, you, you know, you are. At one point, I, I've only wanted to talk to someone who was, who had children themselves, because I know that they, they're a good mother, I know how they, they, they treat their children, etc. So, meeting Shy and she didn't have any children, that was a little concern for me. If my children didn't like her, I would be like, I would be crushed, you know, and I'm not quite sure if we would be going down at all. <laughs> You know what though man? I like this guy. I like him now. I like the white the white background though, the white background. Now, he, he wasn't lying, was he? You know what though? Like um hearing someone talk about their children the way he does, it's beautiful. You know? So to be honest with you, that's why I'm like, you know, I like this guy now. Because, you know, he's, he's, his heart is in the right place when it comes to his children. You know what I mean? And uh, that's just brilliant. Because at the end of the day, we're talking about the most recent season that we've just seen. <laughs> yeah, some people really neglected their children, if you dig what I'm saying. But yeah, man, like, listen, honestly, dope guy. Yeah, 
I really hope that it does work out though. In fact, everything that I've said so far about him, I'm retracting it actually. Yes, I am. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, someone who's good with children, man, I can only give him kudos. But of course, if he is a complete dick away from that, then I have to call him out. But yeah, let's get into it. When that time comes, I hope your children will be able to adjust. I just think that, you know, it's a bigger conversation definitely for us to have, you know. And it's not something you keep avoiding. Hmm. Can I know she's like all about children when she wants to have children like yesterday. She'll send me some random DM of a little baby like, oh, she's so cute. And I just respond usually like, that's cool. You know, get to a certain stage in life now where children are getting older. I'm getting older, unfortunately. So having more children, it's not like a 100% no, but it's definitely not like a yes. We will continue the conversation on children. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk. How well do you guys really know? I mean, you spend how much time together? A couple months? Like physically, yeah. I mean, let's face it, your track record has... Oh, you look so pretty. Hi. I'm excited. My name's Emily. I'm 29 years old, and I live in Salina, Kansas. Good girl. Growing up in Salina, we always had a ton of animals. Could get out of school, jump on my horse, go to the neighbor's house, and just ride till the sun went down. It was like the best experience. I feel the same way, girl. But Salina is such a small town. It's quiet, you know, it's quaint. There's not a lot to do. It's basically a one-horse town. Right, see? Oh, God. Smells awful. I wanted to do bigger things in life. I wanted to travel. I wanted to get out and just experience life to the fullest. When I went to college, the wild child that loved to have a good time came out. I definitely wanted to, you know, party and not study. And I was like, oh, you know, what's a degree? I'd rather go hang out with my friends and have a good time. Nothing really holds me back, and I just do what I want to do. I was like, oh, you want to go to Thailand for a month? Sure, yeah, let's go. Oh, I should go to China for the summer? Okay. So I was in Xi'an, China, and I got the opportunity to teach English there for two months. I definitely wasn't looking to meet someone and have a serious relationship. And I think I had about like two and a half weeks left, and one night I met Kobe. This is me in person. Okay, so of course I found the only black guy in China. But he's also an international underwear model. You know, obviously that's a perk too. The night I met Kobe, we were actually having a girls' night. And I looked over my shoulder and I saw this, you know, guy in all white. He was like getting on, like his dance moves, and like his arms were huge and muscular. And I was like, whoa, this guy's really sexy. I've got to get to know him. So we hooked up that one night, we had sex, and it was like, it was really hot. It actually like happened in the shower on the floor for like two hours. Like it was awesome. I thought Kobe was just gonna be a really fun one night stand, but things got really serious really fast. He was just so sweet and just like a genuinely nice guy. I knew it was somebody who I wanted to be with. I was like, wow, I really think I love you, like even so quick. And we just didn't want to leave each other. And then that's when he proposed to me in Xi'an. Oh my God. Kobe and I had been engaged for four weeks, and one night I was feeling pretty weird, pretty different. My boobs, like, really hurt, and that's when it occurred to me, oh, I might be pregnant. I got a pregnancy test, and I took it about 4 o'clock in the morning while Kobe was asleep, and it showed up very positive, which was kind of a shocker. You know, I couldn't even believe it. I think I bought, like, four more and took, like, four more tests because I was freaking out. <laughs> I was really fearful about his reaction, but Kobe was, like, ecstatic. I always knew I wanted to be a mom. Even in second grade, I told my teacher I did not even learn math because I was going to be a stay-at-home mom and take care of all of my kids. We didn't plan to get pregnant right away, but we weren't. So we decided, let's do it, and let's do it together in America. Since everything had been moving so fast, I wanted Kobe to come to America and meet my family before making wedding plans. So we applied for a visiting visa, and while we were waiting on that, Kobe went back to Cameroon, and I went back to Salina and moved in with my parents. All right, ready? Which one do you want? Oh, this one? Or that one? Doesn't matter. I was definitely nervous about telling my parents I was pregnant. They were already nervous enough to let me go to China, and here I come back with like a very expensive souvenir forever. My parents were shocked when I told them I was pregnant, and I did feel bad. I didn't want to upset them or disappoint them in any way. I didn't know how this was going to work out. How well do you guys really know? I mean, you spent how much time together? A couple months? Like physically, yeah. I mean, let's face it, your track record hasn't been great. <laughs> yeah, I know. But Kobe's a good one. He's the uh, one who's going to break it. I hope so. In my early 20s, I definitely didn't have a... <sighs> well, your mom says you haven't got a very good tri 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 track record. Yeah, let's just hope that mommy doesn't say that in front of hubby. You know what I mean? Because if I had that, I'd be like, red flag, red flag. She hasn't got a good track record of what exactly, mother? Tell me, what? Okay, see you later. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But, uh, I mean, it's a mad one. It's a mad one. I mean, obviously, I hope this all, it's, it's all a genuine thing. You know what I mean? But uh, it seems to me as if this woman's a bit... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for here? I can't think of one that's very... Let me keep it to myself for now. Yeah. So, so far, I've contradicted to myself quite a bit. Which I do enjoy doing, to be fair. Because it is TLC and, uh, yeah. Anyway, let's get into it. Fuck up with guys. I went for, like, the bad boys. I mean, two of my exes are incarcerated. 
Well, I mean, you know, it's one thing if it were only you, but yeah. it's not only you. You got, you know, you have to consider the baby and what's best for him. The week before my due date, we found out Kobe got denied his visiting visa. It was heartbreaking for me because I always thought he was going to be there. Congratulations. I was really emotional when my son was born. You're crying, but you're happy, but you're crying because his dad's not here. So after Kobe was born, Kobe and I decided to file for the K-1 visa so our family could be together. And then COVID happened, which changed everything. We all thought he was going to be here by Coben's first birthday, but, you know, no one was allowed to travel. They weren't processing any visas at that point. So it's been two years since I've seen Kobe. Okay, buddy. You want some crepes? There you go. Our son is now 17 months old. He's never met his dad in person. It's like, it's just sad that, you know, his dad's not here to, like, change the first diaper, or, you know, to, like, throw him the ball or, like, teach him French, you know? Like, it's just been mommy, mommy, mommy. So it's definitely hard, you know? You read me a story? Oh, oh, hey. Hey. Come in. Come here. Come here. Hey, hey, you want to call daddy? You want to call him? After being apart for so long, we finally got an email from the embassy. We got the interview, and then he got his visa, and now, you know, he gets to finally come see me and meet his son. Okay, let's go. Say hi, Daddy. Papa. Dad, 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 Daddy. 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 He's so cute. Yeah, he, we've been playing all the but excited yeah. to see his daddy. Oh, my gosh. Okay, are you done? Okay. All right. Sorry. I can't believe it's my baby. I'm going to see you, you know. I know. I can't wait, man. Let me ask you a question. Are you going to cry? I'm not going to cry. I don't know why I think I'm such a baby. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie though, man. It actually breaks my heart that he's been unable to to, to meet his own child. You know. <sighs> yeah. It's sad, you know. But yeah, let's get into it. Knowing that Kobe is finally coming to America to meet his son, to be with me, I am getting so nervous and so scared. I haven't seen him in two years. I look completely different. Anyways, okay, so I have to go like nurse Kobe because it's about time for him to eat. When Kobe and I were in China, it was definitely honeymoon phase. You know, we were able to go to the clubs, to the bars, and like have a good time. And now, like, I'm not a partier anymore. I've changed a lot physically. When he met me, I was super fit, went to the gym every day. Now I have a mom bod and we have a son, and I don't know if the chemistry's still there. I don't know if he's gonna find me attractive. I really don't know what he's gonna think of me when he gets to America. Okay, you take care of him so much. I love you, baby, and I can't wait to see you guys. It's gonna be crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna hang up on you now. Love you, bye. Go, Ben. I want to make marriage free. I know you don't want to be here, but do you love me enough to stay in South Dakota for 12 months? I've been living with my mom and dad for the last three months. Moving back home. I guess I'm back to 16 year old Jury, and my parents are giving me tons of chores. I hate chores. I do not like chores. It's been 10 years since I moved along. Um, it's just kind of funny and awkward for me because I feel like I'm back in high school. Hey, Dad, I know you said you wanted me to mow the lawn today, um, but I'm trying to figure out how to start the mower. It's like dead. I don't know if it just runs off a regular power cord, so uh, let me know, please. And I respect the fact that they allow me to stay here and save some money. So I'm really hoping that Miona can grow to appreciate South Dakota. How are you? I'm like a sexy zebra. <laughs> Where are you at? You bought that for me? Yes, I'm just down here shopping something. Of course you're shopping. That I'm going to spend all my money before I come. Hey, don't spend all your money, okay, today? Try to save some. Miona's smart with making money. However, she's not the greatest with spending money. And I definitely can't provide for the Kardashian lifestyle that Miona has been looking up to. Because historically, I haven't been smart with my money. So that's one thing that I'm trying to really work on for the next year. So what's going on? Okay. How are you feeling? I'm excited, but I'm a little bit nervous too. Definitely, my life's going to change completely when I come, you know? So are you excited about seeing South Dakota? More times to see, like New York and LA and South Dakota. Like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. We can spend some time with your family, and then when we get on our lives, we we can start our lives somewhere wherever we want. See, this is the thing. The more we stay in South Dakota, the more money we're going to save, and you're going to be able to get adjusted to the culture. Not to mention, we could potentially have our wedding here and save a lot of money. You know what I mean? No, I, I don't think I want that. I know you want the beach wedding. I know that's super important, but maybe just consider a wedding on the prairie. You know what I mean? We can we can make a nice, have some horses. No. I don't know how much money Miona bring into America and how much she's got saved. Miona and I have not discussed finances, which is huge and it's very important, especially when a lot of the pressure is being put on my shoulders. Los Angeles is a dream that is obtainable, but not right now. And I hope that she can just follow me in this direction of staying in South Dakota, being more conservative with our money and understanding that we're thinking about the long-term goal, not just the present. I know you don't want to be here in South Dakota, but you can consider us saving funds and, and having a marriage here. 
Listen, this guy has shot himself in the freaking foot. Pow! Ah! Listen, I'm telling you now, when he was with her in Serbia and they were living that life, doing this, this and that, he, he made her feel as if he's got some some coin, you know what I mean? He was probably talking about his rapping career, that yeah, with this song, I've been here, I've been there. She was like, oh really, oh really, oh really? The reason why you haven't even spoke about finances is because she doesn't love you. She know what, yeah. Yo, no, 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 let's not go there, let's not go, let's listen. listen. I'm not saying that she, does, that she doesn't have feelings for him, but uh, let's just say that she has in my opinion, more feelings for his lifestyle rather than for, you know, anything else per se. And at the end of the day, she's probably expecting him to be wherever they do. And to be fair, the whole time they were spending time together anyway, who knows who was who, who was paying more of this thing they did at that time. Yo, at this rate, you never know. This guy might even be in debt. We just don't know about it. But the matter of fact is, the way he's now trying to say to her, listen, I know you want a beach wedding, but maybe we can do one in, in South Dakota, not have one. Like, bro, understand this. If a woman tells you, depending on the female, of course, but if a certain woman tells you that she wants a certain type of wedding, <laughs> expect this, expect to give her that certain type of wedding. The only time you're not going to be able to give a certain type of wedding is if she's with you for something that doesn't involve a glamorous lifestyle. The fact is you chose a woman that is all about the glamorous lifestyle and she's gonna wanna stick to that, you know what I mean? So, uh, buddy, <laughs> yeah, his best bet is just to leave. Just say to her, you know what, it's okay, it's a wrap. You know what I mean? That's that's it, but boy, when she comes, <laughs> it's gonna be toxic. It's gonna be toxic. It's gonna be, okay, you, you get the picture. Let's get into it. Just here and you should leave that type of life. I really don't want you to come to America and be like 50 year old. I'm sorry. No, I'm not asking you to. We're not going to be living in South Dakota for the rest of our lives. I'm just saying six to 12 months and possibly getting married here. But you tell me about getting married here, that sounds even worse than money in South Dakota because getting married is the one time in your life and I really want you to be really special. It's not a big of a deal. Yuna is thinking about herself with the wedding and she's not quite thinking about my perspective because when she's often talking about I want the city life, I heard her talking about I instead of we. This is a marriage. Now we're coming together and we're joining as one, as a force. So this is where we need to compromise and sacrifice for one another. I could be recording an album with my band. But instead, I've moved back in with my parents just to get me on to the United States. Do you love me enough to stay in South Dakota for 12 months? How does that have anything to do with how much I love you? Of course, I love you, but I can stay in Serbia. I don't So that was a no to my question, then. I'm not going to lie to you. The moment you have to say to someone, do you love me enough? Red flag. Out. If I ever see myself saying to someone, do you love me enough to do this for me? Huh. Huh. That means that I lack faith that, 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 that she is actually going to want to do that for me, you know what I mean? So, uh, um, you know, we should, should we ever put ourselves in a position where we should be like, well, if you love me enough or if you love our kids enough, I mean, nah, listen, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> she avoided the question, but let's get into it. So that was a note of my question. Then. That's not what I said, don't change my words, please. Marriage is a super big thing. So it makes me a little bit nervous that we haven't completely figured out how to compromise yet. We need to stay in South Dakota, we need to save money. But I know that she's just really excited to move on with her lives. So I hope that she can have some patience. I have to go, okay? All right, bye, I guess I'll talk. We'll, we'll finish this conversation later. Oye, estoy jugando un ramo de flores para mi prometida. Tara and I have been waiting. I'm feeling excited and I'm sure the emotions are only gonna multiply while I'm waiting for it. Today I'm flying to the Dominican Republic to get Guillermo and bring him back to the United States with me. I haven't seen Guillermo in over a year. I can't wait to squeeze him, to hug him, and see his little face. Babe, I'm coming for you. And this is the beginning of the rest of our life. I'm going to fly down to meet Guillermo in the Dominican Republic because he has an expired passport and that could be problematic. I'm literally a big ball of nerves. I'm just kind of getting more and more anxious as the minutes go by, but we shall see how we move. My name is Guillermo, I'm 23 years old, I live in Dominican Republic. When everything started changing in Venezuela, I was super young. The economy started going a little bit down. I couldn't go to university because it was getting too expensive and we cannot afford food. I be look. Mm. One day I saw little kids fighting for food in the garbage. The next day, I went to protest the government. I was part of the resistencia and I saw so many things. I remember the last one. I thought it was going to die. Big, the police as well were everywhere shooting and that it was my last one. Because, okay, I, I want to protest, but also I want to see a life. 
I went to Punta Cana because both of my brothers were living here. When I got to the R, I started like, getting focused in my work, knowing that I can actually help so much my family in Venezuela. Buen dia. Buen dia, señor. ¿Qué tal? After I got in the R, I started working in a restaurant and it was going so well. I was learning English and one day, a beautiful day, I met Karen. She's American, beautiful, talented, and it was like, damn. One night, we were drinking a little bit and she was like, so, do you want to kiss me? I was like, oh my god, like, <clears throat> and I was nervous, but at the same time, like, I won't lose this opportunity. That's the beginning. Oye, yo estoy buscando un ramo de flores para, para mi prometida, okay. que lo voy a recibir ahorita en el aeropuerto. ¿Está bonito? Sí, sí, no, no, está chévere, está lindo, está bonito. When I met Kara, I wasn't looking for a relationship. Yes, I had little dates, but they, you cannot even call them dates, because... Body, kiss, bye. But Kara is, like, perfect for me. Damn, so my, my cliche, but... Mm, yeah, I mean, she's the one. I haven't seen Kara in almost a year. It's feeling like a movie, it's, feeling, it's making me feel so nervous, it's making me feel like she can ask. Oh yeah, baby. friends so it's exciting it's sad it's uh, many emotions and uh, in some way just because i'm latino it's very dramatic <laughs> very excited i just want to hold your hand and look at you and just i feel so happy like finally back together but something that scared me a lot a lot is that everyone says that immigration in the usa is gonna be like so difficult that they're gonna ask me so many things that they're gonna test me if i have drugs and i'm traveling that in my opinion with something worse than drugs and it's like an expired passport it's like what the f are you am i gonna do that so it's definitely put a lot of pressure because Kara and I have been waiting for this for so long. I just hope that nothing stops us from being together. Just because you have COVID together doesn't mean you have to get married. We don't know Kobe at all. So the judgment's still out there as to whether I think we're almost ready. I just need you to toss a salad. Uh, salad? <laughs> hey, I know. Who's that? Who's that? God bless you. Toby arrives in a few days, and but he's moving into my parents' house with my entire family. Oh my goodness. Are you getting sleepy? There you go, buddy. All right. When I was younger, I didn't really care what my parents thought because I was never in a serious relationship. But now that I'm older, it's really important for me that my parents approve of Kobe. Ideally, I wish Kobe would have known my family before I got knocked up, but that's just not how things worked out. Kobe's going to be here so soon. It's going to be a whole different world. I mean, it's just exciting that he's coming, and you guys... Finally gonna meet him. Yeah, finally the guy that's gonna be in my life for the rest of my life, so. <laughs> we don't know Kobe at all. Uh, the limited exposure we've had to him has been on the phone, so the judgment's still out there as to whether he's a good guy or not, but Emily is our wildest child. You know, her track record's not that good, so we're hoping Kobe is the guy that uh, is the is the real deal. Yay! 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 Daddy's coming! Yay! Well, how do you think Kobe's gonna be just moving into the house with the big family right now, all under one roof in middle America? This is a big adjustment overall. Him coming here, you know, we're all sharing one bathroom, five adults and a toddler. I'm definitely the level-headed sister, whereas Emily is very carefree. Emily's dating life is crazy, kind of different flavors of the month. And so when Kobe came into the picture, I never thought we'd be talking about her getting married to this guy. So I just hope that it's not just this fantasy. We feel comfortable that this is this is the right guy. Oh my god, I mean, I'm a kid together. Oh. I know, that's what I'm going to ask him too, because yeah. he loves his mama, see? Okay, well, when he gets here, you can have that conversation. Just because you have COVID together doesn't mean you have to get married. You don't have to get married in nine days. You don't have to get married just because you have a baby together. You got to do what's right for COVID. Yeah. If, it's not, if you don't think it's going to work, don't be afraid to say, oh, let's call this thing off. I mean, you and mom got engaged after like a month. So, yeah. Well, that was well, back there's in the that. There's that. That's what I'm saying. That was back in the 80s. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We all hope it works. We yeah. all are hoping he's the great yeah. guy that, you know, you say he is. But 
Did you catch that? Did you catch that? The way that dad was like, whoa, that was back in the 80s. That was him saying, but if it was to, in today's society with all the social medias and all the platforms where, and all the apps where I can meet so many different women, <laughs> I don't know if me, me and your mother would be married. <laughs> I caught that. Listen, I'm a man. The way he was like, yeah, but that was back in the 80s. Ah, look at him. He was, okay, whatever. <laughs> Let me not get him in trouble. I know like I would, but yeah, <laughs> I saw the slyness. Um, but, uh, Boy, man, this Kobe guy is going to be in for one level tree because there's a big family he's got to move into, and that's going to be a big, 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 big change for him. So, um, and it's going to be a massive challenge as well. But this is the problem, though. Even when he moves in with the family, it's going to be easy for him to play the role, to be Mr. Good Guy. What matters the most is when him and his missus are now living just together. That's when it's that's when it's really going to matter the most because the fact is this, you know, I've said this for sort of a long time to so many people. People always say, yeah, but when we was living with our parents, he was so lovely, he was fine. But then when we got a place together, he just changed. No, he didn't change. It's just that he finally got freedom to live how he normally is, to actually behave the way he would normally. It's just that you didn't experience it because how the hell can a man or woman just behave the way they want to behave in front of someone else's parents? No one does that unless they unless they're just unhinged. But hey, like, that's life. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's gonna be interesting. I can expect you to go well, but like I said, the reality will be. You know, let's say this: if we're gonna call out a couple for maybe going to nine day diaries after this, maybe this is the couple that goes to nine day diaries, and then that's when we really find out. You know, what is he really like? You know. Well, hey, yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that if Coben wasn't here, if, if Kobe would still be coming. And my concern is that she's not head over heels in love with him when he comes or something's not the same and she marries him anyway. Yeah. Dad, yeah. like, it's going to be crazy. And you're not going to have the wild life you had in China. I know, that's what's crazy. <laughs> he doesn't know well, mommy and him. He just I know, says, he's, he's going to have to be uh, domesticated very quickly as far yeah. as being a dad, taking care of a crazy one and a half year old and not being able to do everything he wants to do. He's going to have to be a, a stay at home dad for a while. He knows that. Obviously, he wants to have that time with Coben. How do you think he's going to adjust living in Salina? Do you think he's going to stand out, like, yeah. moving here from another country? I mean, there is, like, a lower population of, you know, black people here. It's going to be a big adjustment. Yeah. Are you going to keep naming once he comes here, or what's your plan? Yeah, I don't know. I kind of Personally, for myself in particular, I actually prefer to live in a neighborhood that has more white people than black people, to be honest with you, because I was having this conversation with my friend the other day, you know. I was saying that, listen, man, like, yo, the matter of fact is, Sometimes as a black person, when you live in a black neighborhood, you you kind of you kind of walk around a little bit paranoid that someone's gonna come along and just mess up your progress, you know, in some way, form, form or way. And, and when I say mess up, I don't mean come and rob you or anything like that. It's just that there's a lot of snakes in the grass, you know. And obviously, within my own community, a black community, I know a lot of people that are backstabbed me per se. Have obviously been my own, you know what I'm saying. So, but obviously, when you move to an area where everybody's got a certain mentality of going forward and whatnot, it can benefit you. But here's the thing, though, ladies and gentlemen. It's just one of those things that there are some black people out there who do prefer to live in a night in a, in a white neighborhood. Generally, they don't even care about the racism. They don't even care. They just prefer to be in that neighborhood because they feel low key a bit more safer and low key a little bit more as if they, it's like um who was it? There's a rapper that I listened to. Um, he's, what did he say? He said something about um black people always working to live in a in a white neighborhood. It was it was it was a, it was a very quality line he made and he, it made so much sense you know so you never know maybe he's gonna like living in the neighborhood but to be fair we at the same time though now this is more on a this is more on a madness level okay we're talking about moving mad i would like to though if you're a black man black man specifically you're living in a night like a white neighborhood <laughs> you're the only you're the only chocolate eye candy <laughs> you're the only chocolate eye candy <laughs> let's just so uh, i've known a couple of friends you know they've moved in with their girl to the location where it's predominantly white, and then all the ladies out there like, black person, he's a man. And then the affairs began. Ah oh, man, when it happened to my friend, it was tragic, man. The affair that he got into, man. Went to a couple, to be fair with you. Ah, it became a tragic, yeah. So at the end of the day, though, I wouldn't worry so much, okay? Can't, actually, no, I'd worry, but you know what? Let me let me stop talking. Let me let me just stop. <laughs> bare women looking at there's bare white women looking around right now, thinking, um, we do live in a, in a white neighborhood. Sometimes he's late, 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 late home from work. Um, so what were you doing about ten minutes ago? Because you were ten minutes late. Was you talking to Sally over there? I hope he wasn't talking to her, you, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man making bare ladies paranoid right now. <laughs> anyway, let's go. Kobe's <laughs> here so he can watch Kobe and then I could just like get a job somewhere else. When I got pregnant, Nanny just kind of 
felt like the right choice. My son could come with me. But being a nanny doesn't cover all of our bills. And because of COVID and moving from China, where he was doing underwear modeling, to Africa, Kobe hasn't really been able to work. He's not an underwear model anymore. So my parents have helped out quite a bit. So he can't work for 90 days, right? Like six months. Oh, six months. Okay, I'm picking up the tab for six months. I mean, he's just, I'm, I'm supporting everybody for six months, right? Yep. All right. But one thing's for, for sure. You better not get pregnant. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, yeah. Okay, no, you I haven't heard. seen the guy in two years. You know, I mean, if you got, I mean, uh, I have birth control. I just haven't taken it yet. Huh? Well, it doesn't work if you don't take it. Well, I know. It's fine. We're not going to have any more kids in this house. We are ready to move out. We just can't move out financially, you know? Do you have any money saved up? Go be open a cafe three months ago, four months ago in Cameroon after you apply for your visa. Mm hmm. He invested money mm -hmm. in a cafe, knowing that he was going to come to the United States. Right. Sounds like this guy doesn't really know how to make money, and it doesn't have a good business sense about him, and that's, well, that's a big problem. Yeah, he doesn't have a good track record on the business. No, right? and I'm a, I'm a little leery about this whole thing. I think my parents are skeptical about Kobe coming to the U.S., so a lot has to happen in 90 days. You know, he has to prove that he's ready, and he's committed, and he's all in. If we don't work out, and, you know, my son's father has to come back to Africa, that would be so hard, you know, so it's just a lot of pressure to make sure that we work out. He's going to be here for 90 days. I'll be able to tell right away whether he's bull or not. He's going to have to prove to me that uh, he can support you, and especially... Yeah. We'll see what happens. I want to make sure that she's respectful in our house. And on FaceTime, she... Okay, so let's go here. I'm breaking stuff already. My fiance Miona is coming to the United States in three days, and I am super busy and overwhelmed. Getting ready for her arrival. There we go. I brought your shoes you left upstairs. Thanks. What are you doing? I'm trying to uh, set up a clothing rack for me, huh? Because I know she probably got a bunch of clothes. So I told her, like, to get rid of some of her old clothes that she had, like, just donate them or whatever. But then she went and made a bunch of other clothes. So she sewed up some stuff and designed some clothes. Are the clothes kind of like what she puts on Instagram? Probably. She likes to wear what she likes to wear, you know? So um, I'm wondering what you're kind of thinking it might um, be like to have a conversation with Fiona about the way she dresses. Right? She's not going to be naked, mom. Well, some of those pictures, she's kind of just about naked when you are a guest in someone's home, then you respect what makes everybody more comfortable. I'm not saying that she needs to cover up all the time at all, but based on what we have seen on social media about Miona, he's wearing things that seem to attract attention that I think would be sexual attention. That makes me uncomfortable. And I feel like I need to have this conversation. Mom, let me explain this for you. The half naked picture. Mom, mom, mom. <laughs> Mommy's just worried that her, her own partner may be looking and thinking. <laughs> That's so effed up. That is so freaking effed up. Let me wipe my lips. The way, way too wet. You know what I mean? My lips can only be wet only on one occasion. <clears throat> PG, PG. But anyway, let's 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 proceed, man. Listen, ah, oh, boy, this whole thing's a write off, man. Listen, he's given a, he, 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 like I said, he's he's definitely given her some sort of perception of some sort of lifestyle. And now his parents or his mom, anyway, she's very skeptical. Ah, right, the whole thing's a disaster. If they work out, I'll be hella surprised. But anyway, let's get into it. That's a persona, but that's not the person that you're gonna meet. She likes to wear revealing clothes, just like I like wearing crazy colorful clothes. So I want to make sure that she's respectful in her house. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. It's strange for me having my mom talk to me about Miona and trying to control the way she dresses. When my mom considers herself a feminist, my mom's from Portland, Oregon, and grew up going to nude beaches with my grandma. And I don't know why she's starting to be a little more conservative. And I think what she's doing is she's kind of testing Miona with the modesty. I hope Miona doesn't insult my mom, and I hope my mom doesn't upset Miona, because I don't want to be in the middle of this. How will we go about talking with her about that? How are you doing with communication with her? Mm. I've watched you on FaceTime, right? And you and Miona were, like, having a disagreement, and she um, called you stupid in front of me. And was starting to yell at you. So yeah. I want to know, like, if I'm trying to have a conversation with her, is that how it's going to be? Because if it is, that's going to be a problem. Yeah, I hope not. I hope you guys don't get in a big fight or she calls you stupid or something. But if, did you just say you hope she doesn't call me stupid? I think she's used to that Balkan Eastern European way of talking. They have a whole different communication style. Okay, so so that's fine about like being direct. I'm right. very direct too. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I want to be insulted. Yeah. I don't want that. I know. I want to like Miana. Yeah, I want you to like her too. My family does not know what to think of Miona. They only see the social media profiles. So I hope they can give her some time and get to know the real Miona like I do. So we're going to talk about expectations, responsibilities to each other. Your body, <laughs> my brother, let me tell you something. <laughs> this ain't even about your family getting to know what Miona really is like. This is about you getting to know what Miona really like, because that's the biggest problem. You are definitely blinding yourself to the possibilities of things going south, okay? 
and that is the biggest problem that he's not giving himself that it's like he's it's like he finally got a woman that he's always wanted and he just doesn't want to let go of her no matter what it means he's going to lose or anything like that like the fact that she called him stupid in front of his own mother that she hasn't even met before <laughs> and he's his excuse is oh it's just the way they talk nah it ain't bro it's really not how they talk in serbia i can tell you that now <laughs> ah this guy bro he's a clown anyway <laughs> i'm gonna enjoy their disaster of a relationship I'm not gonna lie to you it's not nice to say you can enjoy someone's relationship be a disaster but uh i'm gonna enjoy it just being honest but well, let's get into it close family and i want to make sure that if you marry her that we stay a close family if i don't think i will i mean you have 90 days to decide right yeah I want to make sure that Shai truly wants me for me, not what I have. So I'm putting Shai to the test a little bit. Well, I think that Shai comes in town. It's been a long process, a long way. I'm feeling excited, but also feel like I need to get all this stuff done. A little bit of my OCD is kicking in. So I just want to make sure that everything looks good, looks perfect for her when she first sees see what she was down. Here I go. Hey, Samuel. Oh, you doing? Good. Today is the big day. Uh, yeah. Been like a and of course you know you catch a little special yeah. touches and follow the OCD. <laughs> <laughs> Nebuchadnezzar is my older sister. My family is extremely close. As the youngest child, I look up to my brothers and sisters. We're a little spread out around the country, so for this, she actually flew in from Atlanta to be able to help me out and to meet Shia. So how you feeling? Not really nervous, probably because I'm like so busy doing like yeah. stuff. I'm sure like rush. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I have not met Shia face to face, of course, but Lau, he really went through a lot in his past relationship. It took him. Five years to kind of open himself up and start to talk to other people. And because of that, I'm very uh, protective of him. I'm hoping that this is the one, you know, a little bit edgy, a little bit, you know, on this whole thing, but I definitely, you know, want to see this one. Wow. Perfect. So, just how do you think you're going to be able to do with this after somebody gets It's definitely going to be a little challenge for me, you know, because, you know, I am used to certain things a certain type of way. So, getting used to somebody else, mm -hmm. or she may feel like, I don't, I, can't, I don't know if I can live with this guy, or I don't know if I can, you know, stay here in KC or America, whatever it may be. And honestly, I think that's where, like, the 90 days comes, you know, because though we have any cop, but, you know, that 90 days really was solidified, like, okay, do we really want to right. legalize things? Because I may feel like, hey, like, she's not ready to actually be in a, you know, you know a full-time regular marriage. And I know she's never been married before, but has she been in a relationship at all where she's been close to being married? Because, you know, being 37, that's yeah. Kind of hard right. to never met anybody to get that close to. She, uh, she, I think she's been engaged actually like twice. Um, engaged twice? Yeah. Wow. Well, engaged twice. It's pretty far. Um, yeah. It's, it seems like, like every relationship she's the one that's also broken it off, mm -hmm. which sometimes that gives me actually pause too. You know? So did she tell you like the reasons why? What was it? Um, I don't want, I don't know like all the reasons. Like, I don't like pry too much. You know, I think one of them. Oh, well, I think you need to pry. As far as the relationship, I do see some red flags. It's like, you know, she's 37 and actually never been married and then never really been out on her own. It does kind of heighten my senses to know that she's been engaged, actually engaged twice, not just talking to someone, but talking to someone long enough to be able to get to that point where you say you're engaged and then you don't go through with it. So I don't want to talk about that. It was very hard for me in a, in a, in a marriage. So I would definitely not want to see him go through the pain again. I think that was enough for a lifetime. <laughs> big sister big sisters stepped in <laughs> but listen i expect nothing less you know what i mean end of the day man she's just trying to protect little bro the fact that he's been single for eight uh, for five years and it took him that long to you know really engage someone you know I, I understand why she'd be so protective man but uh i mean some of them some of the red flags she said i don't know if i would consider them red flags but you know she's a woman and she sees it from a different perspective that obviously i wouldn't see it from and obviously she's obviously trying to look at the perception of the perspective of the other woman do you know what i mean so i get it man all right cool hmm, let's get into it but i feel like his sister is going to be a very interesting um character for the season though because it seems to me as if she's not going to be given uh uh yeah you, you know her name um a, a very easy time you know what i mean but hey well we wish we shall see we are really really unsure would you go through with it anyway? I don't know. I mean, there's a for sure, like a lot of nervousness there. It would be pretty, pretty hard for sure, mm -hmm. you know, for things not to work out. No, love hasn't been very kind to me. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I've had my heart broken, you know, and. Whew. You just deserve the best, you know, and you've been such, you're just such a good man. I just want to make sure that whoever it is, you know, she better act right. <laughs> I don't care who, you know, I'm, I'm thinking that it's her, but I just don't want you to. Yeah. Get hurt again, like you said, you know. Whew. So, anyway, let's go ahead and get these, these uh, rest of the gifts and stuff set up. All right. 
Trying to make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. You did a great job on this. Thank you, thank you. Good. We got Kansas City showing. I would hope she would appreciate girl. all of this. I think that would also tell me something like, <laughs> if she doesn't, right? Because it's like, I mean, I don't big know. On, what I love to, like yeah, like, do things and for people, but at the same time, you want to feel appreciated for it. Definitely. When China comes in today, I got one more big surprise for her. We're not going to immediately come to actually the home. So she won't see this house. She won't see any of her surprises, any of the gifts that I got for her until the day after she comes. I mean, listen, if he's planning on testing her by showing her a different home, uh, that's a red flag of his own. That's a red flag of his own. Like, if you're paranoid that someone's going to be using you for your goods, why the hell are you talking to them? Why the hell is marriage even a question then? Like, because the fact is, she's going to land. She's then going to believe that this is your property. And then you're going to say, oh, we're just testing you. My reaction would be, so after, after all these years of talking to, to, to each other, you still don't trust me? This is what you're going to do to me on my first night here? If she doesn't leave, go digger. I don't know. For me, it just sets up a very bad tone. That's what it is. For me personally, I would rather her come and see my house for what it is. And if I sense that she's overly excited about it, <laughs> then I'll be like, Uber, can you take her to, to, to the motel over there, please? Don't worry, I'll, I'll pay for the motel, not, not, not for the hotel. You know what I mean? Like, that's the best way. At least, therefore, like, there's no fallback on yourself for, for, for doing such stupidity. But of course, you know, that, that's also so long-winded that it's so long-winded that if I generally felt like someone wasn't there for me, then I would not be looking to marry them. But hey, they wouldn't cut a nine-day fiancé for no reason, right? Especially when it's a TLC show, always comes with his doubts. <sighs> I did say at the very beginning, to be fair, though, that, that I had doubts. Then I retracted a little bit, but now I'm back to, to having doubts again, to be honest with you. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. The only relationship at this moment in time that I have hope for is the um, Kara, the, the redhead, and the, the guy from Dominican Republic, I believe. I, I, I see that potential going well, you know? And um, maybe the, the girl with the, with, the, with the parents, you know, and, 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 and the, 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 the boyfriend or fiancé from Cameroon. Maybe, just maybe, but hey. But Jabari, <laughs> right off. That relationship is a right off. But anyway, let's get into it. A van that's not mine. It's a work van, so it's been used, abused for a little bit. And also, I'm going to bring her to my childhood home, the home that I actually grew up in. So you're going to get through the whole night first. Oh, that's the goal. That's the goal. We'll see. Like, would you be down with somebody if they had less than Well, I'm definitely hoping she receives this in good spirit, you know. <laughs> uh oh, so <laughs> I'm putting shy to the test a little bit because... One, I'm a prankster. I love pranks and I love this making people laugh. So I want to get, see if I can get a rise out of her. But two, I want to make sure that China truly wants me for me and not for what I have. You know, like, if I did live here, would you still be with me? Would you still want to be with me? Do you think your prank could backfire? I don't think so. I'm hoping that she'll find it funny. But since the divorce, trusting has been very hard for me. When you have a broken heart, it's, you know, you never want to have that experience again. I think it's a testing ground just to see that if I lived here, would you still want to be with me? Would you want to help build something with me versus just coming to something that's already existing? Shine has always been saying that she'll be willing to live under a tent long as next to me. Wow, home sweet home, right? Let's see if that's really the case. Come here, Prince. Excuse me. And that is this week's episode, ladies and gentlemen. And to think that there are so, I think, I think there's maybe two or three more other couples as well that we haven't met that we, I guess, will meet next week as well. I mean, it was, a good, it was a good start. It was a good start. But yeah, Jabari, Jesus, you know what? Just let me, let me, let me, I just, I, let, me, let me not even speak about that guy anymore because boy, boy, boy. But nonetheless, though, ladies and gentlemen, you guys let me know what you're thinking about uh, season, season nine, episode one. Obviously, I've said a lot of things, so I'll leave it there. Um, but nonetheless, though, I'll see you guys in the comment section as always. But hey, I hope, I hope everyone's having a good Easter if you do celebrate Easter, of course. But hey, nonetheless, though, have a good day. Peace.